What's up? I'm Jake Langreeb. I am from Lawrence, Kansas. I'm 19 years old. I'm a beast. What I did today, I got up, I started packing my apartment, I run to a rehearsal after this, and then I go to class, and then I sleep because tomorrow I leave for the second part of the first leg for the Purpose Tour. I feel like everything just came at once, and I'm totally okay with that. I'm totally fine with getting it done and getting it all set today because I know tomorrow it's that's it. I get to restart my life as a, as a tour dancer and I have nothing to complain about, so why should I complain about being a little busy today? Dancing for Justin at such a young age, I don't know, it, it feels like I'm on a similar plane with him as I can connect with my artist more because he is closer to my age and I have that kind of reference for him of what it's like to be this kind of person on, on this kind of experience, but Oh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I can't imagine being the artist in touring or being crew in touring. I just have the, the life of the dancer and getting to travel the world, you know, with people that I enjoy the company of and getting to do what I love, which is just dance for a living. At 19, I did not think I was gonna be here. I graduated high school last year. I wanted to move to California immediately. I turned 18, moved here and was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, Go for it, why not? Went to the audition last year during my school year for a music festival. And since then it was consistent work with Justin. He's never told us it was tour, never told us it was gonna be going to France, going to, you know, Bali, going to Europe, going to wherever in the world. It was just music performance for this next weekend, maybe do, you know, Billboard or BET the next weekend. And a year later, here we are on, on tour, whoever thought, like, I couldn't have pictured it back when I started dancing, back last year when I was finishing high school, that I would be on tour with Justin Bieber at this moment in time. Yes, I am the youngest on tour. I think he gives us a good, you know, equal amount of respect. I mean, since he knows the older dancers, he's traveled with them more, he has that kind of relationship with them more. That's something that comes with a friendship that builds and, you know, a different relationship between your boss and your workers. And I feel like I have the, oh, he's new, he's hardworking, he's ready to do what he's here to do relationship. And I'm slowly building that, you know, deeper connection of, oh, he's really, you know, here doing what he does because he loves it. And he's here for me, the artist and, I think I'm building that relationship as I'm going, but I think he has us at a pretty good, you know, even playing field for everyone. And my friends knew I danced, my friends knew I did jobs, I did Glee well, my senior year of high school, I did X Factor, you know, during my first two years of high school, and they were jobs I was in and I was out, but this was that job that I wanted. It was the job that I knew could lead to my dance career starting or getting a good foot in the door. So when it happened, you know, kids knew about it when I posted about it. They knew I was gonna be gone, but no one really knew until I did the performance. I posted the videos and it was like, oh, wow, you just did it. You performed for Justin Bieber on the Wango Tango, you know, music festival in Los Angeles, California. And surprisingly, no one cared. Really? <laughs> no one cared and I didn't care because I was like, I get to do this. It's something that I'm pretty sure will impact me later. And then next thing you know, I'm in Kansas City doing a show for Bieber for the Purpose Tour and who hits me up for tickets is everyone. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna help you out. If I can get you tickets, I will. Because I want you to see where I've ended up, what I've been able to do, what you did not you know, help me with back then if you weren't you know, supportive. And I didn't, I didn't need the support of everyone. I didn't need everyone to be like, oh my God, you're great. But the fact that if I told people and it was like, a, eh, it wasn't something they comprehended. But now that they see it and it's something that they wanna do, and something they want to, you know, partake in. You know, I want them. I want them to see me. I want them to, you know, take this ride with me because I want them to know where they ended up, you know, with me. And I want them to still think that, you know, what, he's still a good person because, even though maybe we didn't treat him the best, and maybe we didn't, you know, give him the support that maybe he was, you know, needing at the time. At least we know that it didn't affect him, and this is what he ended up doing in life. I have the best support system I could possibly think. I have both of my parents who were fully, you know, motivated to keep me doing what I wanted to do, whether it was baseball, whether it was, you know, taekwondo, whether it was dance. And when I chose dance, both my parents were on board fully. My mom 
owned a business, missed many uh, baseball games and dance competitions, and when I reached a certain age, she was the one that wanted to travel with me to LA. She was the one that wanted to be there to help me get to my next level in my career. So she came with me many a times out to auditions and back, or she helped me fly out by myself when I got older to auditions and back that day to be back for school. They would help me, you know, with, with everything. They are currently moving out of my apartment while I'm here. So it's like, I can't ask for a better support system than both my parents, my dad, who's continually working to help me, you know, fund my career and help me with anything if I need anything. Now that I'm an adult, I've reached that point where I can support myself, but if I ever get in any kind of, you know, bind, I have both of them to call upon and ask for assistance or advice or, you know, just to talk to anytime I need it. So I have, I have a great support system and I love both my parents very much. Staying humble is something that I think I started off really getting pushed into me, getting beaten into me was by my parents when I was really young. Being humble can come from you being really good at a sport when you're a little kid, good at t-ball, and you hit a ball and you get to first base and everyone's like, you're amazing, and you could be like, I know. Or you could be like, nah, man, I could have done better. It starts at such a young age that it kind of has to be taught, or even if you can't teach it, it's something that comes to you from the people that are around you. And I had that, that group of people and those people around me all my life. I have my parents, I have my friends, I have choreographers. And it's important because you could be hired on talent or you could be hired on attitude. And it's, it's a mix of, mix of both. If you are a great dancer or a great musician or a great director, but you have a terrible attitude or just a terrible background with people and you end up working with them or people find out about it, you won't get hired or you'll get hired with a stigma attached to you and that will restrict you in the future. I guarantee it. You could be on the job, say one bad thing to a crew member. Well, that crew member could be the best friend of your director just by happenstance from their childhood that now work in the same job and you just got beaten by management because you have a bad attitude. If you don't click, it's not anything personal. If you don't click, you don't click. And people are gonna wanna work with their friends. As, as sad as it is. You could be the best dancer, but if you're not their friend, unfortunately, it's not gonna work out. But that just may not be the job for you. If it's not the job for you, you move on. It's not gonna make or break you. One job, one opportunity, one thing is not gonna be the end of what you do. If you keep pushing and striving to be better and keep a great attitude and make all these different friends, you can make a connection right off the bat that could get you your job. And that you maybe not have gotten in touch with you because you were too young, you didn't look big enough, you weren't old enough. Well, two years later, they, hook you, they hit you up and they say, hey, I finally have a job that's good for you and it's gonna set you for three years because it's a world tour. Yeah. And you just got off the other job thinking, oh my God, I'm not gonna work again because I am not their friend. You could be in a slump and that one thing could build you up. It's crazy how you have to keep just a good attitude to set you off for the rest of your life. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's such an important factor. What's next for me? Currently, what's next for me? The tour is set for two years. We're finished to end in late 2017. So after you know we finish off this leg, we do a music, two music festivals, actually one in London, one in Japan. We come back and that's on a break and then we go do three months in Europe and we get to travel around Europe and do that leg. And once we come back, we're still waiting on dates, but we have to hit Australia. We have to hit Asia for real and actually, you know, go to Japan and China and Hong Kong and Korea and all these different places. We have to come then back for a break. Then we'll probably go to South Africa. We go to Central America. I know and we do two shows in, you know, Mexico, one in Mexico City, one somewhere else, but we just have the world to go through and I, I honestly can't wait to see what happens in the in the upcoming months and what happens in the next year and then what happens after that and I don't really think I have a stopping point I think I want to keep going once this tour ends or when I'm on my breaks what can I audition for I worked on these breaks because I was I was hungry I couldn't sit still for two weeks so I don't know what I want to do after this what, what's next for me we'll finish the tour after the tour I don't know book another one, start choreographing, creative directing, contemporary, I don't know, anything. Start ballet if I want to. I think 
It's important for us to think about our future in this career because not everything is forever. I, our bodies are not forever. And as much as people think, oh, I could be training, I could be in the best shape of my life, I could be fit and look great and feel great, that's not gonna last because you could take one wrong step on the stage when you're so into the performance and you could twist an ankle or break a leg and you're out for a certain amount of time and they could bring in your replacement and they can do this and they can do that and there's so many different things that can happen in a short amount of time that are unpredictable that you have to be ready to pretty much be like, okay, if it doesn't work out, I have this. In thinking about the future, I like to think about it as a day at a time. I take it a day at a time because I know if I think too far ahead, I'll get anxiety. I'm going to college currently, so that way if dance doesn't work out, I have a business and psych degree I can fall back on and I can get a job or I can work in the industry as something you know, that involves business or psychology. But if you want to think about your future, do it. Don't think about, oh, I'm going to book this one tour and I'm going to book it. Okay, what if you don't? What if the hard, sad truth is you get in there and they're looking for all black guys? Well, guess what? I'm not going to book it. Am I going to complain and moan about it or cry about it to whoever? Because that's going to fix it. Yeah. It's not going to fix it by me complaining about it. It's going to be me going, okay, well, that didn't work out. Push it aside. Keep it in your mind. Okay, that happened. Great. Move on. Think about what you can do next. Well, if I can't dance for this person, if I still want to work with this artist directly, maybe I can start you know, doing crew. And think about, well, if I start doing that and I want to continually go that route, I can work on them, you know, that next tour as a roadie or I can work on them as, you know, the choreographer for the next tour. I want to be the assistant director. So you have to continually think, what can I do next to better myself? And that's something I don't think a lot of people think about. They think about, well, I can dance. Okay, so can every other kid that moved to Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. What else can you do? It's not enough just to dance anymore in this industry. It really isn't. And that's a sad fact that I think a lot of people have to come to terms with. You can't just be a good dancer. I think I'm a Beast changes the industry completely. I think you take people that not everyone would think, oh, they can do it, or people that haven't been given the exact chance or moments, and you give them that chance and you show them off and you give them, you know, debuting roles or you give them, you know, videos or channels or segments and you say, hey, they're good at this. Let them show you they're good at this. And this is what they can do. Look, notice, embrace, take these people for what they are and use them for what they're showing you. You have people that are directors and want to be cinematographers and want to be cooks and want to be actors and actresses and you have all these people, kids, adults, and you have them in this one area and you're going to showcase them with this network. This is what I'm a Beast was building up to when it started out with the five boys outsiders and the five girls in Lady Jane's and the eight girls and eight flavors. Whoever thought, Will, I think honestly, you guys knew this was gonna be some building point of it wasn't gonna just be dance. It was gonna build up to something much bigger and much more inspirational and monumental and everlasting that a crew, you know, couldn't do alone. And I think, you know, I'm a Beast is that group. It's that lifetime name that it will forever be known as not just a dance company. It's something that'll ever be known as a movement and a reality that I think we live in. The advice that I would give to people that want to do what I do is never settle for what you believe is your best. I mean, be confident in yourself and have that, oh, I'm doing really good at this moment in time. Like have confidence, do that, but don't settle really for where you ever are because you can always do better. You can always improve yourself to a point where you then don't have to ask yourself, can I do better? Reached a point where I've come to contact with myself that I'm like, I'm in a really good place and I'm doing really well for myself and I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. 
So, you know, never settle. Don't listen to other people if they tell you, you can't do it, you're wrong, you know, you're nothing. That's one person's opinion. People are told every day on YouTube, on social media, you're not gonna make it, you don't look good, you aren't the right body type. Okay, what are they doing? Commenting on your photo from their home? Do you. Don't listen to other people. Listen to people that want to give you positive critiques that will better you. Listen to people that you want to hear critiques from. And then really take into consideration if those are the right people. There's so many different aspirations for one person to take that you need to really search for what you're looking for in you know, your career. What do you want to do? Do you want to dance? Yeah, okay, then dance and keep trying until you've reached that point of, okay, I've made it. You know, keep pushing and doing it until you are satisfied with what you're doing and not until someone else tells you, you've gone far enough, okay, you're done, or you know what, you can do better. Keep going until you know you've done all you can do in your life to be where you are. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jake Langreeb. You're watching The Beast Network.